How's it going, folks? Nick here with the Seattle Permaculture Vlog. My co-star Otto is just behind me. Come on on out, Garden Cat. Today we're going to, I'm just going to show you a project I did over the weekend, Friday and Saturday. Um, I basically installed a new garden bed, but I, I filled that bed with topsoil slash compost from my chicken system and solely from that. I didn't import any, uh, any sort of topsoil or anything for that, and it's a pretty big bed. So I was actually, personally, I was surprised I had enough. So I, I was just really excited about it, and I want to share that with you guys. So we're going to go check that, check that out real quick. Uh, I'll show you how I made the bed, my process. I have a couple, a little bit of footage from during the making, so you can kind of see the, the whole process. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll focus on that, and then we'll just hit a couple of chores and we'll finish up for the day. So let's get started. This is Lazy Cat. Lazy Cat. Yeah, you just wanna lay down, huh? He's a funny one, that one. I'm just gonna check on the chickens. I'm gonna feed them after. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna focus on just uh, the task at hand. Here comes the rooster to show me who's boss. Everything seems all right in there. They still have a little bit of food. Rooster's doing his rooster dance to try to show that he's the boss. All right, let's just check in on the uh, greenhouse real quick. Looks like we got some good growth so far. Pretty much everything is taking, which is exciting. I usually get some sort of dud, but so far so good. That's kind of the backup for anything I've direct seeded, just to make sure we have something uh, to replace it with if it doesn't quite take in the ground. So here we are at the bottom of the chicken system. So in here, this is where I make all the compost uh, that, that I do on my property. I do it up in the system itself. So I usually start further up near the, near the feed pail way up there, and then it slowly turns down and down and down, and then I kind of turn it back and forth underneath this tarp so it has a nice little protected area uh, so it doesn't get too wet, too dry, etc. So uh, the chickens interact with it the whole time, so they're, they're involved in the process the whole time, so really they're doing most of the work. I'm just piling it up every so often once I have a compost pile. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my videos on compost piles, I'll leave one of them linked above. Uh, I've done quite a few, one of them making a compost pile, how to turn, when to turn, all that kind of stuff. So I have a whole playlist. I'll link that playlist above right here so you can check it out. Um, just highly recommend that because composting and making compost is one of those basic things that pretty much anyone can learn how to do. Uh, and then making really high quality uh, compost uh, to add to your garden. So just gonna improve your soil so much. Highly recommend taking the time to learn it and go through the process, absolutely. And you can integrate the, the composting with your chickens so that they do most of the work for you and uh, that you just basically are managing the system as a whole. So I highly recommend that. I think I also have a, uh, a video about integrating the compost with the chicken. So I'm sure that's in included in that compost playlist. So anyway, compost is here. Once it's finished, I'll kind of harvest it and move it up into the garden, beds all there, etc. But uh, I always leave a decent amount and you can kind of see where they're standing um pretty much the base level is like down here so they're actually standing on a little bit of uh build up right there and i haven't even taken from in there so there's probably a couple inches worth of old compost in there which essentially old compost becomes topsoil i mean that's basically what it is in the forest leaves fall they break down they start to rot that becomes kind of the compost for most of the uh the, the bacterial life is and, and all the, the fungal life and all that, all the microbiology. It's gonna be in the, the, that topmost layer. And then as that breaks down, it just becomes part of the topsoil and then moves further down and then more come down, more leaves fall, more compost gets made, et cetera. So that's a natural process. So here we're speeding that up. So we're making the compost with the chickens, they're doing it. And then everything that's left here is kind of slowly breaking down and creating kind of a topsoil compost mix. So it's basically not compost because it's not extremely active in, in the biology and the microorganisms that make a compost pile, right? Compost is basically like supercharged organic material that has all those beneficial microbes that you want in your soil. So um, at this point, it's probably not super active because it's just been sitting here for a long time. But this makes a great uh, kind of at least organic material to add to garden beds. But what happens is when I finish the compost, they, they scratch a lot. They like to scratch. And as they're scratching, they kick this down. And so this entire area ends up becoming covered and, and it doesn't grow with grass because uh, they just disturb it too much. They keep kicking new stuff onto it. And then when they come out, because right here I open this gate and I let them out down here into this little pasture area and then their dust bath areas over here. So 
I let them out down this area. So they keep coming up and down here and then they keep scratching right here. So I decided that instead of trying to me trying to save this area and everything, I'm just gonna let it become the area where the excess compost is gonna be kicked down. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I protect this area whenever we get those heavy rain events. So that's why these uh, palm fronds are here. Um, I actually replaced these palm fronds because right underneath the palm fronds, this is where I harvested all the topsoil from. So you can kind of see here, really dark soil right here, as compared to it, like if you look here, this is kind of the, the typical kind of clay subsoil color. But all this super, super dark, dark, dark soil here. And everything right here, this is what I harvested from to, uh, to basically add to the bed. I think I have a video of the chickens actually, right when I started uh, I removed all the palm fronds and I started kind of harvesting everything and then instantly the chickens were all about it. They were over here scratching away, looking for the good stuff. They kept finding little things. You'll see them running around looking for things. I think they found a few worms in there. So anytime I see worms in the soil in the tropics, I know it's a pretty good soil it's because it's just rare, more rare to find the worms uh, throughout the soil in the tropic. It's more likely to find ants and termites, et cetera, which we found plenty of there too. So once we have all that kind of harvested, I basically took it and I got to add it into my new bed. Now, when I started this new bed, it basically was just grass. Um, it was just a kind of grassy area that was underneath the two plantains that I have here on site. Um, so I just laid out a bunch of uh, a bunch of old wood I had from a staircase that I removed that went up to the roof of our house. Um, kind of rotting wood, stuff that's not going to like last super super long, but it's something that I'm not going to use for any other bigger project. So I got to use for the garden. So I basically took that area. I've been layering that area with kind of just excess material, excess organic matter. Anytime I had extra stuff, I would just throw it near the bananas because they like a little bit of extra nutrient. So I just kept throwing stuff down there. And then right as I prepped this bed, I added a lot of green material uh, from the plantain leaves, uh, other weedy stuff. I just layered it all down the ground to make like a little bit of a sheet mulch. Um, and then once I had that down, I started filling that up with the soil. So the end product looks a little something like this. So now I have a full bed that is uh, completely mulched, planted, and protected from the chickens. What's nice here is I took all the soil from right here. This soil filled this entire bed right here. And this is a longer term bed. It has a lot of sun exposure and it's gonna grow my bigger things. The things that don't need to necessarily be uh, managed all the time. Uh, something that's gonna be more long term and also something that's gonna like a decent amount of sun because right over here, pretty much right down this way is south and uh, it gets lots of sun, at least in the second half of the day, this entire area, the sun kind of gets all throughout this little sector right here. It gets lots and lots of sun. So as long as I can keep things off of this fence, which is the challenge here, as you can see, that's what the fence looked like before I cleaned it up. And then this is what it looks like after I cleaned it. So it certainly needs a lot of work to maintain that kind of cleanliness, but I'm gonna attempt to uh, basically take that over with what I'm growing in here. So we'll get to that in just a second. So I use these plantains as the overstory for this bed. I put these in a uh, good probably six, eight months ago. And they're getting to the point now where they're thinking about growing and they have their little babies, little e holes here. Um, right here, you can see they're starting to shoot up their new one. There's one there on that one. There's one right over there. So these guys are gonna basically produce and then walk around, but the plantains produce a little bit longer term. So they're gonna end up being basically high overstory shade for everything that's gonna end up being growing in here. So it's just gonna give it a little protection from that midday heat of the sun. And then down on this end, we actually have a, uh, a cocoa palm, coconut palm. It's a baby from the one that's right on the site here. And it just started growing here. So I basically just allowed that to stay there. And that'll basically be the long, long-term tree here that will take over this space. Um, but for the time being, it's gonna probably take another three to five years before it's even close to productive. Um, so that's just gonna kind of stay there, but it'll end up being kind of the long-term support species. Uh, and then these plantains will probably just keep producing for quite some time. And then this entire bed can be cycled in and out of uh, various, various crops. It'll long, long term probably be a perennial garden, um, but at first it'll be kind of a perennial biennial garden where I can plant bulky crops um, in here that I just want to have a little bit of extra, extra room for. So I'm going to open it up now just to kind of show you how that process works. So I just have two, uh, 
two boards just holding the base down just in case the chickens do get out and try to get in from the bottom. So that's just holding it down. And then this chicken wire is just temporarily put here. And I'm just gonna basically use the uprights as support for it. And for now, I'm just gonna use this kind of major thing. I could get a temporary fencing, but for now, this is gonna work just fine for me. I have a little bit of post in the middle here just to help keep it up, but you don't need too much. And there we have it. So there's a bed, nice easy access. That's easy to open up and be able to do all the work I need to do on here. Uh, instead of having a bed where I need to kind of guess at where I need to walk and everything, I added two uh, just tiles, extra tiles I have here to give me a spot where I can walk into to actually do all that maintenance I had to do. So instead of having to kind of figure out, oh, I'm gonna walk here, hopefully I don't step on anything, I can just walk right into the middle of the bed and I have access to everything right here at this point. And from that one, I have access to everything like on, on that kind of corner. So it basically is reducing the amount of kind of path space I need for this bed. It's kind of the keyhole thinking, but instead of keyhole, I'm just using little access tiles to get in there. So since this is a long-term bed, and, and one of the things I really wanted to get in here was chayote. Um, chayote, I forget if it's an annual perennial. Actually, I meant to look that up before I started today, but I forgot. Um, but it is, a, it is a vining crop and all parts of it are edible. It creates a kind of fruit, a kind of fruit that's some, I think it's in the zucchini uh, or the cucumber family. It's one of those two. Um, and it produces just like this small little fruit that's edible. It's perfectly edible, but apparently also all the leaves and shoots are edible. I think it also makes it some sort of underground tuber that's edible. I found this one uh, when we were going on a trip around the island and the place we went had a bunch of chayote growing and they had a whole bunch. And I yeah, go ahead and take one. So I just took one and it's chayote. Um, you can't separate the seed from the actual fruit or at least not very easily apparently. So you basically have to wait for it to start sprouting. So I've been holding onto this fruit to start sprouting. And once I had it in, I, I, we mulched heavily all throughout here. This entire bed is nice and heavily mulched, right? And that's basically gonna protect the soil from all the excess weedy growth that I don't want here. And then within that deep mulch, what I did is I created a little bit of a pocket. I added compost and then I added the chayote right into that compost and then covered it up. So instead of planting into the soil directly, I'm planting into the deep mulch. So I'm making a little pocket in the deep mulch and I'm putting the compost in that pocket and then I'm putting the chayote within that uh, kind of compost pocket. So right here you can see it's starting to grow. That's the chayote fruit right there and that's the sprouts coming off. It's actually grown more leaves since I put it out here. So that's really good to see, which means it's, it's probably nice and happy here. And so this thing is, it, it grows in a, similar to like a pumpkin or it's just gonna spread out. It's gonna get really, really bushy and spread all over the place. So I'm putting it here so that I can end up trellising it up, trellising up onto this fence line. So hopefully it will take over all that huge growth onto the fence and I can harvest it from the fence line using these two uh, stepping stones here. Um, in between all this other space that's on this side here, um, I added uh, more compost pockets. There's one like here, there's one over here, there's one here. Uh, all along the side here, every one foot or so, um, I added winged beans. So that's another tropical uh, bean, a vining bean. And uh, it creates kind of this, this, this uh, bean pod that has little wings on it, little, little flaps on it. I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure if this one is an annual or perennial, but I know it's a tropical one, so it probably just grows abundantly and likely just self-seeds and keeps growing and going and going. Um, and we just got, I just got this one recently from Rio up at Hacienda Rosa. Thanks, Rio. Um, so I'm really excited to see if those take. I'm um, expecting they will because they are a tropical bean and, and pretty much anything that's a tropical-like thing will grow quite well here. So. Um, they're gonna kind of grow up and they'll end up providing some extra extra nitrogen for this crop. I have a wing bean on, on either side of this chayote here. So all that nitrogen fixation that these beans do will end up uh, uh, interacting with the root system of this chayote to hopefully give it a little bit more of a boost. And then I also have wing beans just all along the back here, just so that I can have a, uh, a nice, lots of beans growing up and, and hopefully harvest and just use the fence of the trellis. On this side, I have two set up. There's, I think there's one here and one right over there. 
And then I use this old uh, staircase railing, and I'm gonna use that as a trellis to grow the beans up. So I added four, one, two, three, four on this one. Uh, so I'll have a little bit more, and then I'll have use this at least as a starting trellis, and I might need to add a little bit more because they'll likely grow more than that, but um, that's a place for it to start. And it also helps just kind of solidify this side of the bed for me. Throughout the rest of the bed, I just kind of sprinkled in amaranth all throughout that back area with a deep mulch. I'm not sure if that'll, be able to grow through the deep mulch, but it could be a really cool cover crop, um, just something to take over the rest of the excess space. So I just threw it in there and we're gonna see if it takes. We don't know. I have absolutely no idea if that'll actually work or not. In between these two, uh, in between these two stepping stones, I have onion. I have an onion variety that's supposed to grow really well here in the tropics, or at least in Puerto Rico. Um, and then I also have that same thing here, kind of taking up that inner space in between uh, the back area. So remember, even in this bed, I'm thinking about zoning. So in the back here, that's gonna be long-term. That's gonna be producing, taking the longest to harvest and also quick break. Check out Otto on the sewage line here, enjoying his life, uh, exploring. He loves it back here. Sorry about that, back to here. Uh, so back there, that's kind of the longer term stuff. In the middle here, I have kind of a medium term onion that'll grow up. It'll take some time to grow, but then I'll be able to harvest it and I can easily replace that. Um, likely the chayote and the wing bean will still be producing when I'm harvesting those, uh, the onions. And then all along the front here, I have a long row right at the front, nice and easy to harvest, of Asian greens. So the Asian greens should grow super easy here. So far I've had uh, absolutely no problem growing Asian greens here in the tropics. They like a little bit more of that heat. Um, we are going into the cool season, so I could probably get away with more of a cool season uh, cool season crop, but I'm, I'm just gonna go with the, with the Asian green because I know it'll likely grow quite well and I don't have to think about it too much. That's usually my goal is to grow something where I don't have to do too much work to actually make it work, uh, make it grow. and produce for me. So uh, that whole first row, it's Asian green and it's two types. One is a 25 day yield and one is a 50 day yield. So in this front row here, I should be able to have in 25 days a yield of leafy greens and then I'll cut those out and then I'll have another one that'll take another three or four weeks to grow up and become its full uh, expression and then that'll be the longer term of the leafy green crops and that's right along the front edge nice and easy to open up and harvest I don't need to step in anywhere it's right at the edge there so that is my new kind of long-term big bulky garden bed long term this will end up probably end up being you know sweet potato yuca cassava yuca is cassava um, or manioc depending on where you are in the world um, we actually have some growing it's growing over the fence here and it's just growing natively it's this thing here with the palmate leaf uh, right there it's kind of growing in there's a bunch growing on this side of the fence you can just kind of see it growing over there all over the place those big palmate leaves like wide spread fingered leaves uh, that's growing all over the place just over the fence so uh, as it makes its way over to this side i'll probably end up just snagging some shoving it in there and that'll be another long-term crop because those guys take uh much longer than uh most of the other crops here i think it's about six to nine months for a harvest so that'll probably be you know thinking about when next hurricane season is september ish so i'll probably be putting that in the beginning of the year and it'll hopefully be my hurricane crop just in case we need it this fencing that goes around the entire thing is going to be helpful in keeping things like the cat out um, which I'll have to do. Nope, nope, nope. I know you want to go in, but you can't. I don't know if, I don't know if you heard him, but he meowed when I said no there. He wants to go in real bad. But he keeps the cat out, hopefully. Nope, nope. I know you don't, you don't want, you want to go in there, but you can't. That's a no. It'll keep the cat out, but it'll also keep the chickens out. Right after I finish this up, I close everything up, and I think I have some footage. Uh, the chickens immediately were interested in kind of seeing what was in there. They were walking all over the area that I had just been taking up that whole time while I was building. And they kept looking in into the gate, finding things, but then I think the rooster uh, found a little something in, in, the, in the side there, and the, all the, the, both of those hens went running for him. Um, so yeah, this is gonna definitely be interesting to the chickens, and it'll be interesting to see if I can actually keep them out. Hopefully with the tall, chicken wire this will be okay to keep uh, the chickens out um, that's my hope i really hope so because uh, i've had quite a few beds recently ruined by chickens and i'm kind of over it so ready to be done with that process so uh, fingers crossed but yeah that's the bed it basically it was a completely free bed because all this material was just excess and, and waste waste material 
Um, all this wood came from a staircase I took down, a rotting staircase that was essentially just going to be old rotty wood anyway. Um, I used that to fill. There's a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the fence there um, and it just kind of drops off down there. So I basically used uh, an old board there. You can kind of see part of it right here um, sticking up to fill that get big gap there. And then at the bottom there, I have nice tall pieces of wood to help hold in all the extra soil as it moves downwards naturally with gravity. And then this side, I just have a nice defined edge. And then on the top here, other than that, uh, other than the railing here, it's actually open. So I don't have an, a side there. And that's just to allow all this excess soil and nutrient and everything as it works its way down. If it works into the bed, I'm perfectly fine with that. I have no problem with that happening because it's just going to end up feeding the plantains and whatever else is growing here. So um, I'm perfectly fine with having that open and uh, it's just going to allow me to or facilitate an easy moving of material in here. And as this thing rots down inevitably, I can easily just pull that off and then it's an easy straight in for all that extra compost and everything that's just working its way down from the chickens right there. So look at that, we have a kick down system, compost starts its, its process up there, moves its all on its way down, finishes right around where the chickens are, and then excess kind of gets brushed in here. This is a long-term topsoil building area. And then from here, I harvest topsoil and move it in to this bed. That was the process here. It was a long-term process. It wasn't a quick process, but that process uh, yielded some really nice soil. Uh, let me show you what I got in here, just so uh, I don't think I, I showed you guys yet. I think I'm safe at taking it here. So look at this nice dark soil. Nice dark soil, uh, full of lots of material there. Uh, it smells good. It's not super, su it's not black. It's a really dark brown. That's what I'm looking for here. And uh, yeah, that's that's all straight from the chickens. So thank you chickens. Uh, if, I don't know if you guys saw my, my Instagram post, but they were taking a little bit of a nap. Maybe I'll throw that image on here right now. It's really kind of funny. Right after I finished all this, or I was finishing up harvesting, they all took to a little sun bath right near, uh, right at the bottom of their, of their cage there. Yeah, that's it for me today, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll just gonna take care of the chickens and everything on my own, because I think you guys have seen that enough and you don't necessarily need to see it again. So thanks a lot for watching today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you do like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel or share some of my videos. It really helps me get more reach uh, and get the word out there for what I'm doing. Um, and just being able to get these, these videos shared to more people. I've actually been seeing, uh, one of my videos I think is at the top of the uh, search when you search for tropical permaculture. I think one of my videos is towards the top there. That is so exciting to me. I'm just kind of getting started with all this. I mean, it, it's been you know quite a few months at this point, but still it's, it's pretty early to be getting some really good search rankings. So I have to thank all of you for that, for clicking and watching and sharing and, and subscribing and being part of my community. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's give you one more shot of Lazy Otto. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So do hope you enjoyed. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being part of my community. And uh, until next time, have a good one.